raise your hand if you like to wait. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yet we wait hours on end for a two minute roller coaster ride? Why? Three reasons. The ever-changing speed, feelings of weightlessness and heaviness, and of course, the infamous loop-de-loops. Changing speed? I thought you just coasted through the ride. <laughs> That's actually where the name coaster comes from. The higher you rise, the more potential or stored energy you gain, and the more kinetic energy or speed you lose, and vice versa. The lower you descend, the more potential energy you lose, and the more kinetic energy or speed you gain. Okay, but that still doesn't explain the long wait times. I mean, I'd rather just hop in a car and change the speed myself. Good point, but that'll hardly change your Gs. Or more specifically, your vertical Gs. Wait, I thought the force of gravity was constant. The force of gravity and your real weight isn't changing. However, your perceived weight caused by the normal force is. At rest, these forces are equal. Therefore, we experience 1G. At the bottom of a drop, the normal force of the cart must be greater than the force of gravity, resulting in positive Gs. 3Gs, for example, would make you feel three times heavier. At the top of a hill, a much smaller normal force is needed to meet the net centripetal or center-seeking requirement. On some rides, this normal force is not even needed, allowing riders' inertia to carry them out of their seats. Either way, passengers experience Gs less than one, often called negative Gs, causing them to feel lighter or even momentarily weightless. Thank goodness for seatbelts, especially when it comes to loop-de-loops. Thanks to centripetal acceleration, they're actually not needed in loop-de-loops. As long as the gravitational force doesn't exceed the centripetal force causing the entire cart to fall, neither will you. So there's an outward force that keeps you pushed into your seat? Not quite. Although you feel the centrifugal force while on the loop, it is actually a fictitious or inertial force. What you're actually experiencing is the inward centripetal force that keeps you from going off the track on a tangent. Wouldn't it be the normal force? The tension in this string represents the inward normal force. It is larger at the bottom and smaller at the top, once again changing your apparent weight and vertical Gs. However, a circular loop like this can cause whiplash or even broken bones due to excessive normal forces. I've never seen that. That's because today, loops are a clothoid or teardrop shape with a constantly changing radius. The large initial radius means you can enter the loop at a high speed without exceeding 3.5 Gs, and the small radius at the top allows you to maintain contact with the track at a slower speed. Whoops! I forgot about inertia!